the word for this week is determination. Okay? Determination. And the law of success for this week is determination eliminates procrastination. So get excited because we have our champion, our leader, our hero in our own community, Genevieve Jones, right in the building. She's running for DA. And I want to just say before I begin and uh, introduce her one more time, she's very approachable. She's very relatable and she has an awesome spirit. Take it from Mr. Black San Diego. It is our extreme privilege our, uh, and our pleasure for you to join us this Saturday morning, this Sunday morning. We're going to supersede the Super Bowl this morning with That's you right. here on the show. Um, let's all welcome our champion, our community hero, Jenna V. Ev Jones Wright. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here, so thank you. Um, it, it's our privilege. I mean, uh, you're amazing. You know, for you to come gracious with your presence, you know, I just want to just say again, uh, she got a fabulous spirit. And I'm not just saying that because she's on the show. She's very relatable. And I know she can bring action and satisfaction to our county. So um, please um, share with us uh, who you are, um, uh, what you're about, and uh, what you're running for. Okay. So I am born and raised Southeast San Diego. Very proud of that. And I always make it a point to say that I am from the city of San Diego, but I'm from the heart of the city. I'm from Southeast San Diego. And that's important for our children. And it's also important for us to understand that we don't have any limits. And while others may try to limit us, Southeast San Diego has already soared to higher heights, even if people don't highlight those stories. But I'm here to say that we have awesome people from Southeast San Diego and we are going to exceed even where we have come from. We have a lot of folks from Southeast who have already made great accomplishments, but now we're gonna sort of even higher heights. And I'm gonna take that position in the district attorney's office and change the face of the criminal justice system here locally because we have to do things better and we have to have a balanced perspective. Right now, our system is out of whack and I am here to say that I stand with the people the people of every single neighborhood, every single community, I don't care what your income level is, you deserve representation. And that representation should also be there in the district attorney's office of San Diego County. It is time out for having certain communities and peoples targeted. It is time to have true justice for everyone. So I am running for district attorney for the county of San Diego. So no matter where you live in the county, all the way San Ysidro, all the way up to the northern part, all the way to Julian. You can vote for me and you should vote for me if you want true justice. So, a little bit about me. Sorry. Please, Guys, please. I get a little bit excited. And June 5th is election day, so make sure you write down Genevieve F. Jones Wright on June 5th. Write that in. Take copious notes. Yes. Even if you don't remember how to say my name, you just remember I am the right choice. So when you see Jones Wright on the ballot, know that that is the right selection for the like district that. attorney. Uh, the right choices in the right. building. In That's the building. Right. So please, uh, what inspired you um, for this challenge? So it all started when I was in fourth grade, believe it or not. I was eight or nine and I had a mentor at Knox Elementary School. That's before it was a middle school. Knox Elementary School. And he told me about Justice Thurgood Marshall. And so Justice Marshall was still on the bench at the time. Obviously the first black Supreme Court justice in our nation's history. And I remember learning about Justice Marshall and thinking, I want to be like him. I want to use the law to make our nation better and greater. And I want to use the law to actually make our world better. And so I decided as a fourth grader at Knox that I would be an attorney, but not just any attorney. I had to be just like Justice Marshall and I had to be trained like him. Like him. And so I decided I had to go to Howard Law. And so in the fourth grade, no one in my family had ever even been to college. I went home and I told my mom, I'm going to go to Howard Law and I'm going to be an attorney. And so it was always in my heart to use the law to do better and to make things better. This portion of my path is just that. It's just a part of the journey that God has placed me on. So when I first thought seriously about the district attorney's office and running for it, it was last year. I started a leadership institute and the very first day which was the day of the women's march last year if you can just imagine this and they had asked questions about what are the things you're passionate about what are the problems you would like to solve in the world and everything i answered related back to criminal justice reform and at that moment just a little over a year ago i said why are you running from this this is your destiny 
And so I decided that I would do it, but I first spoke with God about it. And I said, if this is from you, I will do it. If it's me, it's not worth it. Once I got that confirmation, that was it. It was foot to the pedal. There's no stopping. We're going to win this on June 5th. Do you hear that? Do you hear the determination? Do you hear the drive? Do you do you feel the fire? That's destiny we're speaking of. And, you know, speaking to our higher power, it's not about us. It's not about uh, the ego. It's about the we go. It's about the people. And I'm Absolutely. telling you, this this woman right here has it. And she's homegrown here in San Diego. Absolutely. And um, I definitely believe in her. On June 5th, make that right choice, okay? And vote for Genevieve Ev. Okay, Jones, right. We'll get that. We'll get that right. A lot of folks say Genevieve. How how do you pronounce uh, your name? Genevieve. Genevieve. And you know, I let people slide. You okay, know, you let me slide. Thank I, you. I let you slide. It's all good. Just get it right on the ballot. <laughs> <laughs> just get it right on June fifth, and that's why uh, I just want to say, um, just the um, the strides that you've already made is, is visible waves, and um, has inspired I know a whole generation of of young of young women and of young women of color when they see uh, a woman of your caliber have grace and posture and represent herself um, at a high level. And I just want to just applaud you and commend you on that. Um, you know, you're an inspiration to me as well um, and to the young black and business nation. So, I mean, we got to get out and we got to rock the vote and we got to make the right choice on uh, June 5th. Yes, and it's important we continue to say June 5th because a lot of people think that we're going to go to November and we're not. Correct. This race will be decided on June 5th. And I'm up against a corrupt political machine. If you remember last year, the district attorney herself stepped down in order to put in her hand-picked successor. And so we're talking about someone who believes that they're entitled to a seat. And when you talk about people who hold power, we have to look at the structure of the district attorney's office. We have to look at who's had that seat. We've never had a person of color, let alone a black person, and yet we are most impacted. We are most impacted by the mass incarceration machine, and yet we don't have a say at the decision-making table. And so when you talk about the power holders, they will do anything to maintain that power because it keeps their pockets fat, it keeps the people who keep prison doors open happy, and I am running against all of that. And so we have to show up and say it is a new time and it is time to do things differently. The people want to be heard and the people want representation. And the people are tired of mass incarceration. That is plaguing the black community. It's tearing apart families. It plagues everyone, the black and brown community especially. And it is time out for that. And so we have a chance. We have an opportunity on June 5th. And I am confident that the people who want change will show up and they will tell their neighbors and they will tell their family, their friends, their church members what the right choice is because it's time to do business differently, not business as usual. Absolutely. We totally agree. And uh, this woman on June 5th is in the process of breaking the prison, uh, the, the cradle to prison pipeline. Absolutely. We, we have to break that cradle to prison pipeline. Uh, they already have our life expectancy uh, determined by our zip codes and yes. we need to change business absolutely and we have the opportunity on june 5th yes how could um what are some of your handles um how could we um outreach to you how could we join your campaign uh, how can we get involved we're already excited how can we get involved and i get so excited to see the excitement of people because you know in the beginning people were a little skeptical why would we even vote for a da because you can actually have a DA who represents you and fairness and justice and dignity for everyone. And so I'm so excited that in these last few months, people have come around to understanding that we can re-envision that office. For so long, the DA has been seen as a person who could do no good. But I want us to reimagine the role of the district attorney and see that the DA has the power to do good. And so when we talk about how you can reach out joneswrightforda.com is the website you can go there you can sign up to be a volunteer it is for and not the number four that's important for the website for twitter for ig it is jones right the number four da those are my handles i'm on facebook like my campaign page follow it i don't do anything but speak the truth i don't know how to be a politician i'm not a politician so i'm halfway playing this political game i just speak the truth to power and that's what we need. 
I get so tired of so-called leaders who have no courage. And so when you want to donate to me, you have to check a box and say, you are not affiliated or associated with private prisons. Mm -hmm. Because I've been fighting against the prison industrial complex since I've been in college. And that is something that I am not having. And we have a lot of leaders here locally mm -hmm. who accept funds and donations from private prisons and claim to be on the side of the people. And we have got to change that mentality because you cannot take those funds and you are a part of the oppression of black and brown people. Beautiful, okay? So you should have your young black in the business pen out right now taking copious notes. The first note you need to take is make the right choice on June 5th, okay? For Jenna Eve Jones. <laughs> he was right. doing so well, y'all. He was doing so well. <laughs> I see it, it's felt, yeah. but uh, let's just say, let's make the right choice. Okay, and make the right choice on June fifth. At this time, I'm gonna present you with a young black in the business power pen. Yes. So you can um, it's power in the pen. Absolutely. So when you're making those policies and, and the ordinances, you could um, you know, just keep us small people in mind. You know, you sort know of say. I want to say this. You are not small, and I'm gonna tell you, our community is not small. That's and right. I, I really do love this pen. So thank you for giving it to me because I always tell young people that we have to hold our pen and never let it go. Mm. Because when we allow for another person to pick up the pen and write our story, we have lost power. Mm. And so I have always determined that I will write my own story. People try to write me off, you are a product of a single family home. Mm. You live in Bay Vista apartments. You are for, from a low income background. You're from Southeast San Diego. You're black, you're a woman. They've always tried to tell me what my limitations were mm. and I've never accepted that. And so we have to understand that we have to write our story. And that's why I love you, Roosevelt, because you write your own story. Mm. And we have to get to a place where we are telling everyone, hold your pens. Are you selling these young black and in business pens? Oh, yeah. oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Everybody needs to get one. Remind yourself we need to hold our pens, never let it go, and write our stories. Because as long as the hunter writes the story, the lion will always look as if he mm. is oppressed and suppressed. But we are lions, and our li we need to write our stories as lions. Okay, and I'm going to just say, that's not a lying lying right there. She's not lying. She's telling the truth Absolutely. right there. Okay, so take copious notes. Make sure you get out and make that right choice on June 5th. We want to thank you again for tuning in to the Young Black and Vision Show. We just want to reiterate, the word of the week is determination. And as you can see, we have a determined woman in the building, and that's from our community that's representing our county. How big is that? The law of success for this week is determination eliminates procrastination. We need to get up. We need to get out. But whatever we do, we don't need to give up. Okay, on June 5th, get out and rock the vote and make the right choice. We want to just say that here at the Young Black in the Business Show, we start with a commitment, we deliver with quality, and we're always going to finish with success. So on June 5th, make sure you get out and make that right choice, and we can all be successful, healthy, and happy in our own community. We want to just uh, thank you again for coming out to the show. We're about to take a brief commercial break, but before we do, um, where do you see our county in 100 years? You got one minute. One minute to tell you where I see our county in 100 years. Let me tell you, I see black people at the dais. Mm. I see us not just limited to the 4th District and City Council. I see us representing other districts. I see us as Board of Supervisors. I see us as mayor. We've never had a black mayor. And let me tell you something. We're going to have about four or five in 100 years. Okay. I see us in the positions of power that we need to be in, representative of who we are. And so that's where I see us. I see more and more black lawyers because we don't have enough of them. I see more and more black doctors. I see a commitment to underserved communities because that's the only way that our communities actually get the attention that they deserve and need. It's when we come back to our communities. And so I see more and more of that happening as we embrace who we are and we go further into advanced knowledge. Beautiful. Hit it right on the head. <laughs> Black in the business, we are restoring the color, the culture, and the consciousness. We believe that our network is our network.
connecting young black entrepreneurs in San Diego and across the nation is pivotal for our economic growth. When they see us, we're gonna be wise, we gonna be beautiful, and we gonna be strong. And that's all they ever gonna see when they see us. And that's young, black, and in business. Well, not only are we black, we back, and uh, you should get inspired because we have the people's champion with us, okay? Miss Jones Wright, make that right choice on uh, June 5th. We start with a commitment, we deliver with quality, and we're always going to finish with success. For those that are just now tuning in, the word of the week is determination, okay? And the law of success for this week is determination eliminates procrastination, okay? Get up, get out, but don't give up. But now it's time for you to get excited because we have our community champion in the building with us, Jenna Eve. <laughs> okay, Jenna V. Yes. Jones Wright. Excuse me, you're going to crucify me. No, you know what it's I mean? all good. But I'm going to make that right choice on June 5th, that's and that's right. all that matters. That's make that right. right choice on June 5th. <laughs> so please, um, what are uh, some policies that you like to implement? So the first thing that I want to impact is the school to prison pipeline. And so you talked about the cradle to prison pipeline, and that's actually the better name for it. Because we see that as a state, we are investing at least $62,000 on each inmate per year. You say again for me, please? That's a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Over $62,000 per inmate per year mm -hmm. in our prisons, right? And that's what we're doing as a state. If we actually took that money, it would pay for 15 children to go to preschool. And what we know is that when you go to preschool, you're 28% less likely to be incarcerated. And so we are actually needing to call this the preschool to prison pipeline. And that's why I like the cradle to prison pipeline because we have shown as local governments, as states, as a federal government, we really don't care about our children. When we look at where budgeting takes us, when we, when we follow the money, we're seeing that we would rather invest in the prison industrial complex than our own children. And so we have to get to a place where it's not true anymore that African American kids are three times more likely to be kicked out of preschool than their white counterparts. That was a federal study. And so you talk about this school to prison pipeline, it does not start in high school. It is starting in preschool. And when you look at San Diego County and south of the eight, we are most impacted by the school to prison pipeline. When you talk about school resource officers and the kids that are ushered into our jails and our courtrooms, it is the children who go to school south of the eight mostly. And so we have to change that. You look at what happened at Helix High School. You look at that officer and how he responded to a student. And you're thinking, well, that was over the top. Why did you escalate the situation when that was a clear place where you could have de-escalated it and dealt with something something differently in a different way and yet you manhandled and used violence on a young female student and so when you have these school resource officers on campus when you have this law enforcement presence that treats your children differently than other students at other schools this is where you have the school to prison pipeline because right now those students and the student who was directly impacted and her family are worried about whether the district attorney is going to file charges against her. And so this is how we get this cycle of our children being placed into this pipeline. And so the first thing I want to do is to disrupt, to end that school to prison pipeline mm -hmm. by not allowing for our children to be brought into court for things that we all got away with as kids or that White students are getting away with right now. I hear stories all the time. When you're talking about schools in the Poway District, they have fist, uh, food fights and nothing happens to them. And a parent came to me and said, well, this one time a black student engaged and that student was suspended. Well, why is there an equal treatment? And so we have to talk about the reality. When you have a district attorney who can make a decision about the lives that they will impact and say, you know what, I'm going to push this back to the school administration because this has no business in our criminal justice system. That is the role of the district attorney to refuse to prosecute children for being children. And something should just be left on school grounds. And so that's the first thing I want to do. I'm very passionate about our kids. A lot of the things that happen at Lincoln High School, you know, I'm sorry, you gave me a microphone. I'm going to talk. So, you know, 
things that happen at Lincoln High School. And Lincoln is very, very near and dear to my heart. I am a board member for their criminal justice program advisory board. I am a mock trial coach for their mock trial team. But what I've seen happen at Lincoln is you can have straight A's and you get into a tussle and the superintendent can come to your side and everyone can say we want to be a restorative school the way we've been advertising and we we don't want this child to go and have a conviction based on that decision that was made and we don't want to ruin that kid's life and we don't want to set that child back and the news media will show up the next semester with cameras talking about how that child should not be in school we have got to change the mentality we have to stop this where our children are looked at as criminals and they should be prosecuted they should be criminalized no we need to put restorative justice in our schools and we need a district attorney who will actually stand with communities and say our kids deserve better and we don't need to set them back any further because we know what convictions do so that's one thing brother roosevelt <laughs> please please share the other part of this is just how we have over criminalized and over prosecuted our communities in general mm. so our jails are full of nonviolent, low-level offenders that is a problem that's a problem because we see who's targeted when you look at the numbers and the data of african americans who make up our jail population i can go to 2015 because the data is there it's clear and it's confirmed at 5.6 percent of the county's population African Americans made up 23.6 percent of the jail population. Can you say it one more time, please. 5.6 percent of the population is African Americans. This is in 2015, and yet they were, we were, 23.6 percent of the jail population. Mm. And so, when you talk about overcriminalizing communities and targeting neighborhoods, you can see that in just the numbers of us that are represented in the jails. When you talk about the mass incarceration machine, is what I call it, it's a machine. We talk about it as a system and it is, but it's a machine because there are so many parts to this and they're all working together to target black and brown communities. We always box it in as this criminal justice issue. We are in a crisis right now. We are in a crisis. This is a racial issue. This is a social justice issue where they're using our prisons for social control and racial control and we have to start speaking the truth about this because there are more African Americans under the control of law enforcement be it through prisons, jail, probation, parole. We have so much surveillance in San Diego County that people don't even know about. We got GPS monitoring. We have PCRS. Our numbers are more right now as a country of African Americans under this control than South Africa during the apartheid. Mm. Than right after Jim Crow. So we have got to get our hands on this. We cannot continue to sit idly by and thinking, oh, you know, this is just a separate issue. No, every single district attorney has their hand in this. Every single district attorney in the 58 counties in California alone has control over who is charged, what they're charged with, why, when, and how. And so we need to have that decision-making power so we can be fair, because right now it's not fair. We've got into a place where our federal judges in California said, empty your prisons because they're overcrowded. You got inmates sleeping on the floors. We say that California is so liberal, but I can't tell when I look at our prisons and our prison systems. And so we have to understand we've gotten here only because of the status quo. So the status quo is not working and we need to replace it. And we need to replace it with smart justice. We have to be smart on crime. So criminalizing homelessness, criminalizing drug addiction, criminalizing mental health issues is not smart. It wastes our money. It doesn't help anyone. And if you talk about reducing recidivism, we have to get down to the root of issues. So. That being said, I want to offer help and not handcuffs. That's what we need in a DA. Help and not handcuffs, okay? On June 5th, when you arrive, bring five and make the right vote. Yes.
okay? Because she is our champion, she is our chief justice, and it is imperative that we allow her to lead us with the justice, with the justice, and with the and with the insight and with the knowledge. We have to eliminate the big eyes and the little U's. Absolutely. We have to eliminate the ignorance and inertia that plagues our community. So on June 5th, make the right choice, okay, for Miss. Let's get it going. Jenna V. F. Jones Wright. Yes. Did I say it right that yes, time? Yes, you did. <laughs> And Wonderful. you mentioned justice. Yes. And that's what this is all about. And I say true justice, and I hate to qualify justice because justice should just be just. But it's not. And for a very long time, justice has been reserved for a few. Mm. And so my campaign really is all about true justice. I want to make sure that every single victim, every single survivor of sexual assault and rapes have dignity and that they have justice. Mm. I want to make sure that if you're a victim of police brutality, you have justice. And I want to give you a number because I know you're a numbers guy and you love stats and you love knowledge. So in San Diego County, between 2005 and 2015, we had 155 officer-involved shootings. That's a lot. Mm. And our district attorney's office determined that every single last one of them were justified. 155 times. Now, wow. talk about the odds of that. Every wow. single time they were right. Wow. If you have a district attorney who's unwilling to say that sometimes, sometimes officers get it wrong, we don't have a justice system because sometimes officers do get it wrong. And we need a DA who's going to say that no one is above the law. And so when you talk about justice, justice has to be for every single person. We have a deputy sheriff right now who's at home collecting taxpayer money, who's getting all these benefits still. And there's 14 women, at least, who have come forward to say that he sexually assaulted them, stalked them, groped them. And this is why he wore a uniform why he wore a badge and he drove to their homes for help in his patrol car. So he went to their homes as an officer of the law and violated the law. And our sheriff has said some things that makes me believe he doesn't believe in justice for these victims. Our DA hasn't said a mumbling word. The DA has not said a word about the racial profiling study. How do we have a district attorney who understands that cases come into our courtroom and before they come to the courtroom, they go through the district attorney's office. But they come to our courtroom and to the DA's office through law enforcement, who makes arrests, who gives tickets and citations, who search people, who puts them into databases and subjects them to field interviews. And they're doing it based on race. And you don't say a word. How are you the district attorney for the county of San Diego if you won't even acknowledge that we have problems in our justice system. Mm. It is time to do better. It is time to do better, and the time is right now. The time is now. The time is June 5th right now, and um, I want to just share. Get excited, get connected, and get involved. Absolutely. Get involved. Can you please share um, your handles one more time for the, for the viewers that are, that are just tuning in? Absolutely. So my Twitter and Instagram handles are... Jones Wright, the number four DA. So that's J O N E S W R I G H T, the number four DA. My website is www.joneswrightfordda.com. And I would encourage you to check me out on Facebook. I put up videos, and all I know how to do is speak truth. So if you want to see some real talk from a candidate, like my page, follow me. That's beautiful. And um, on your mission, to um, give us chief justice, um, some some transparency plans. How do you um, how do you plan to be transparent with your constituents? I believe that we don't have a justice system that serves the people if there's not transparency. But along with transparency, we need accountability. So the first thing I want to do is to invite the people. I want to have town halls routinely and consistently all over the county. I am already starting these. They're called public safety town halls, and my first one's going to be in Chula Vista at Mangia Italiano on 3rd Avenue. That's going to be on February 28th. My whole thing is that I don't necessarily know the issues that touch people's hearts. And as I've been campaigning and on the campaign trail, I've met a lot of people who have a lot of issues they want addressed. And every time I speak with them, I listen. And I go, and if I don't know about it, I do the research, and I say, 
this is how we're going to handle that. And so the first thing is to bring the people in because for a very long time, and it's still going on, our elected and public officials believe that they can sit on some hill and look down on the people they are supposed to serve and tell them what's best for them. But a lot of our people are not in the community or of the community. And so their ideas don't work necessarily, or they think something is a problem, or they don't know something is a problem, and it's the exact opposite for the people they're supposed to serve. So my thing is, I want to be the people's choice, and I am the people's choice, so I have to listen to the people. So I want to encourage everyone to reach out to me. You can message me. I message back. No matter how busy I am, I will answer back to you personally. So the first thing is I want to get people involved. The next thing is that we have to have transparency and a consistent policy about how body-worn camera is going to be released. And when are we going to release it to the public? That is something that I'm working on. I have a big idea about it. I will unveil that later. The other part about transparency and accountability, I talked about the officer-involved shootings. The people will never believe that the district attorney actually investigated and vetted these officer-involved shootings to the fullest and with fairness if the process is not transparent. So I want to have an independent unit in the district attorney's office that would review officer-involved shootings, but not just shootings. Anything officer-related where there's excessive force. I can tell you now that as a public defender, a lot of my clients come to me, they're battered, they're bruised, they have black eyes, I look at their booking photos, and you can tell that they were manhandled and excessive force was used against them to facilitate or to effectuate their arrest and nothing ever happens. We need an independent unit in the district attorney's office that will look at those things and say, was this officer wrong? Mm. And in order to do that, the process has to be independent. There has to be a unit that is sealed off from the normal district attorney's office where these officers are very intimately connected with the deputy DAs. And I get it. That's the nature of the business. Police officers have to work with DAs. They have to be witnesses. They have to coordinate, so they have to speak. But this independent unit that I will establish would mean it would be headed by DAs who do not go to court at all. They have no reason to be speaking with officers. They don't have a personal, intimate relationship. So when they're looking at these shootings, when they're looking at these allegations of misconduct, they will do it with clear and unbiased eyes. And that's what the people need so that they can stand behind me when I stand up at a podium and I say, this was justified or this was not justified, but that the people will understand. And I will communicate it very clearly and always let the people know what went into the decision-making process. We don't have that right now. And so there's a lot of mistrust. And I want to bring the trust back to the district attorney's office. So I'm all about transparency and I'm all about accountability. All about transparency and all about accountability. And I just want to just uh, commend you because a wise man and a wise woman know that they don't know it all. Exactly. So the fact that you're look, looking to take a um, consensus building from the constituents or from the community speaks a lot. Because a lot of candidates or individuals, they know it all. They may be my, macho. I know it all, but to have the approach where I'm going to listen and learn and then take action, it, it speaks volumes and it speaks for the people. You really are the people's champion. And that's why on June 5th, we need to uh, get behind you, stand alongside of you and make it happen. We need to bring that truth to power. And I'm just honored to have you um, in the building. Happy to have you as part of one of our uh, community lighthouses because one lighthouse can guide many ships. And you're looking at... Um, having that spotlight all around you. You know, you're you're helping us out. You're giving us direction. And um, you're our voice. And I, I like the fact that uh, you know what you're talking about. Um, it's great to hear you uh, look forward to dismantling the cradle-to-prison pipeline because that's major. It because is. they have us a cradle-to-prison pipeline. They know where you're going right when you're born. Yes. Right, right when you're born. So um, what else could we look forward to? Um, please give us that date in Chula Vista. That um, you're having a form? Yes. So we're calling it the Public Safety Town Hall, and it will be on February 28th. It will be down in Chula Vista. We are working on one here in Southeast San Diego. So if someone wants to tell us about a venue where they will allow for the people to come together and they're not trying to gouge us for money, 
I would love to have one in Southeast San Diego. I'm going to have one in East County. We're going to have one in North County. All of these things are in the works. If you know of any locations in any of those parts of the county, that would be wonderful. And then I'm also looking to do one other one besides the Southeast San Diego one in, in another part of the city. And so it could be the beach community, but really just wanting to get out there with the voters. Like you said, got to build a consensus with the constituents. It's all about you all. My opponent says she's law enforcement's choice. Well, I'm tired of that. They have representation on their unions. They have more rights than we could ever think of. When the DA files charges against anyone, they file a complaint in the name of us. They file it in our name. Every single complaint says the people of the state of California. So how do you feel comfortable having a banner on your website declaring that you are law enforcement's choice? I want to be the people's choice. I want to hear from the people because the people are being affected by what's coming out of that office. And so we need leaders who are going to stand up for the people. And that's why I say I'm not a politician because I ain't saying stuff to be political. I'm not saying anything that a politician would say. I'm telling you that I want to know what's important to you. I want to know where your expertise lies because yes, I've been racially profiled, but I can't tell a mother who lost her son to police violence, how that feels. So I want to hear from community members because you all are the experts of your life. And your lives are all impacted by policy making decisions that are coming out of Sacramento. And that's another thing. People don't think about the district attorney's office lobbying power. Mm. They lobby in Sacramento. They have a full time paid lobbyist. So while they're trying to attack me and say I'm going to be an activist DA, yes I am. I am down for bail reform. I have been working on that issue with the ACLU before I was a candidate. I am still a bail ambassador. I believe in bail reform because we need it. We are impacted most as African Americans. The Latino community is impacted. And let me tell you something. The district attorney's office has made it their business to oppose bail reform. And they've made it their business to oppose other common sense legislation in Sacramento. So we have a fantastic opportunity to get someone who will use their lobbying voice and their strong power in Sacramento to say, let's do things better. And so talking about things that they have opposed that make no sense at all. My opponent says that she is the, a national expert on human trafficking. And San Diego is a hot spot for human trafficking. If you look at the numbers, we're in the top 13 in the country. We have a lot of human trafficking, sex trafficking that happens in San Diego and it's happening right under our eyes. And so there's a problem there, right? But we can't address the problem if we are stigmatizing victims of human trafficking. And my opponent and the DA's office spent money, taxpayer money, to send their lobbyists to Sacramento to oppose two bills. One bill was to help human trafficking victims get rid of their convictions that they got as a result of being human trafficked. Let me say that again. They wanted to keep human trafficking victims from clearing up their record as a result of the convictions they got from being human trafficked. That's just not common sensible, but you stand there and say you wanna help survivors of human trafficking. Then why would you wanna set them back? The other bill they opposed was to decriminalize kids who were human trafficking victims. That means they wanted to continue to prosecute our babies who were human trafficked. Luckily, we have a strong Democratic presence in our state Senate, in our state assembly, and so these bills passed. But what are we doing when we have a DA who one side of their mouth says, being a teenage prostitute is not a choice, it's slavery, but you want to prosecute those same teens? What is it saying when you say being human and sex traffic, these people are not prostitutes, they're victims, but you want to set them back and hold them with convictions that they're going to have to keep repeating on job applications, things that employers and potential employers would be able to look at. That is shameful. And so when you talk about being smart on crime and smart justice and having common sense, 
We need someone who's not looking towards convictions. And that's someone like me who's going to bring a balanced perspective. I have a balanced perspective because I'm representing these people. I represent our veterans. I represent young people, 22 years of age, who made a mistake and they want 40 years to life on. So that's the perspective we need. Someone who understands that it's not about convictions all the time. Absolutely. Um, uh, we need to eliminate the double talk and get straight talk. Absolutely. And I'm going to just say, uh, um, in the next two minutes, please have your questions ready because we'll an answer some Facebook Live questions um, for our, our champion, Jenna V. F. Jones Wright. Make that right choice on June 5th. And I just want to just give a, um, a shout out to you because uh, you are... Um, you are exemplary. You are practicing a formula that I'm going to give everyone that has their young black and in business pens ready. It's P over P equals X. P over P equals X. And it stands for performance over politics equals success. You have to perform. Okay? Performance over politics equals success. So get excited, get connected, and get involved. And what we mean by that is get pumped up. Tell somebody. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody about our champion, about what you learned today. Get connected. Outreach tour. Um, uh, send her a, a message. Ask her a question. How can you get involved? And the next um, get involved is go out and vote. And when you arrive to the polls, bring five. We want to just say here on a Young Black and in Business show, before we take some questions from our audience, we want to start with the commitment. We're always going to deliver with quality. And we're always going to finish with success. The word of the week is determination. Determination is the word for the week. And the law of success for this week is determination eliminates procrastination. So just don't pontificate. Get out. Get excited. Whatever you do, don't give up. Okay? We got some hope in the, um, in the, in the building and in our community. And uh, it's Genevieve Jones Wright. So we're going to take a question. Um, from our audience on Facebook Live, they've been giving you a lot of love. You know, you're making a difference. We want to give a shout out to Brother Cornelius. Um, our DC, we see you. Um, we also have uh, Ms. John, uh, they're going to follow you on Facebook. They're saying a real deal. You know, you really are the community's champion. You, you get love in the community and um, because you're inspiring others and you're actually waking us up, revealing uh, the veil over our eyes and you're providing us with some esoteric information. You're giving us what's going on down downtown and uptown and all around. I don't mean to be so cliche, but you're <laughs> but you're informing us, and that's what we need. Someone that's going to give us the information and uh, give us that transparency and that accountability. You know, um, what are some of your uh, successful habits? Well, I'm gonna tell you this. Before I came here this morning, I already had two meetings, so Woo! I don't, I don't wake up in the morning and not thank God. That's the first thing. I wake up and before I even put my feet down, I say thank, thank you God. And then I put my feet down and I say thank you God. Mm. So that's the first thing. Mm. You have to get in the habit of acknowledging who your source of strength and your power is. Every day I encounter a lot of negativity. When I decided I was gonna run, you know, you always have your naysayers, people who say, you're too young or you're not ready. Why don't you do something else? But when God tells you to do something, you be obedient and you move. That's it. You just move. And so I never start my day without saying thank you. And so every 6 a.m. on Sunday mornings, I get with my two best friends from college and we do a Bible study. And that's every morning, every Sunday morning at 6. So that was my first meeting. I meet with God first. Mm. Then after that, I made breakfast, and I had a meeting with my campaign manager. What was on the menu for breakfast? Okay. <laughs> so I had some kale and spinach-infused eggs, because you know you got to scramble the eggs and get your, your kale and your spinach in there. That's a little right. bit of cheese. I ain't going to tell you about all my special cheese I do, because, <laughs> okay. you know, I, I'm in love with the Munster cheese and the Havarti's and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. But with a wonderful croissant mm -hmm. and some turkey bacon, I do not do pork products. Those are not allowed in my home. I don't eat beef either, but mm. turkey bacon, the best right now, I'm going to plug Costco because they have the best turkey bacon. It is thick, it is juicy, and it is right. Okay. She's so. a real person. You see how she's ready to death with that? And that's what we need. That's what we need. Very relatable. Okay. Yes. Um, 
So that was my breakfast. But I had breakfast with my campaign manager so we can debrief over the week mm -hmm. and then go forward and talk about strategy. You cannot undertake something like this and not have a plan. And you also have to have checkups. And so every week we're sitting down at 730 to make sure that we're on track and moving forward in the direction that God has set the vision for. Mm. So again, keeping God at the forefront. When I'm done from here, I'm going to church. Mm. After that, every single Sunday, I go to see my 93-year-old great uncle. Mm. And that's how I spend my Sundays. And these are, you know, just, that's my routine for Sundays. During the week, I work full time. So I am in court defending people morning and afternoon. And so I campaign from 12 to 1.30 on my lunch break. And I, I really want to thank my team because my team keeps everything afloat when I'm not able to engage in campaigning. So the enemy will try to set snares and traps and, and catch you slipping. And so I have a, a wonderful person, Susanna, who does my social media. I don't have to touch it. When people are on Twitter talking about you're using campaign time, Honey, pull the records. I'm not worried about you. Everything's on the up and up. And I have a team that believes in this vision for true justice. And so I want to take the time out to thank my team. Beautiful. And at night during the weekday, I am running around. I am meeting with people. I am getting endorsements. I am talking with folks. I'm coming to clubs and organizations and getting the vision out there and getting people behind me. And so that's what I do on a day-to-day. -day. But I never start my day without thanking God. I, don't, I want to just reiterate that because uh, God is definitely the nucleus in my life as well. Just how I can be relatable to you. Um, every morning before I wake up, I thank God as well. But before I touch the floor, the carpet, anything, I thank God and step with my left foot. Because my left foot keeps me on track with being military minded and moving on spirit and heart. Because our heart is on our left side. So when I move, I move with compassion for others. I'm moving with love. And I'm thanking God in the, uh, in the same in the same step, all in the same motion. So every every morning, I thank God in bed and step on my first step is with my left foot. Yes. So and it, it, that consistency and it builds a momentum and and you're moving with purpose because you're on a mission. Yes. So that's why I can definitely relate to a woman on a mission. And just to share with the viewers, February is our month for uh, women empowerment, uh, women in color and women just in general. It's time. For us men to just um, take a step back and to pr protect our women. However, let them be in the forefront because they are powerful. You know, a uh, woman is powerful. Women in general. So that's why we have to have our champion just come and just set the record straight. And just because uh, she's spearheading the campaign. She's jumping on grenades for us in our community and in our county. So we have to just uh, take our hat off. We got to just tip it to her as man and get behind her and protect her as man. We have to represent. So it's an honor. It's a privilege. And we are to commend you for that. You know, and um, you. we got your back. Uh, you. I'm going to let you know, when, you know, when you when you wondering who got your back, we got your back. You're not alone in this race. And we just thank you for being that spearhead because you're spearheading the campaign and, and you're determined. And, and we can sense that. And, uh. But just from sitting next to you, I know I got a tan because I feel the fire. <laughs> I feel it. I, I feel the energy. And um, and and I share on the radio show, get excited. I'm excited. Okay? So on June 5th, get involved. Okay? We got Jenna V. F. Jones Wright in the building. We start with a commitment. We deliver with quality. And we're always going to finish with success. The word of the week is determination. And uh, determination eliminates procrastination. So just don't be on Facebook and Twitter pontificating, all talking tough, talking macho, get involved. Do something. Be be something. Get up, get out, but don't give up. That's right. So, I mean, uh, what else would you like to share with us? What else? Is there any um, vision cast? You know, vision cast. Uh, how would your first 100 days in office look like? Well, I'm going to change the culture in that office. I'm going to bring more diversity to the office because there has to be diverse perspectives and there has to be diverse living experiences when you talk about deputy DAs who are issuing cases, who are reviewing charges and whether they should be filed when they come from the sheriff's department and police agencies from across the county. You need folks who don't have this vanilla life so they don't get that some things are 
implemented some stops start with race and so i want to bring diversity so when you look at the first 100 days you're going to see that the folks who are representing us as deputy district attorneys will look like us and they're going to look like the people around in this community i want to see more of my muslim brothers and sisters represented hate crimes are up 117 percent in the county i want our Jewish brothers and sisters to be represented. I want our Asian American Pacific Islanders to be represented. When I'm calling out these groups, I'm calling them out because I can count who they are in this office of a thousand employees on two hands. That's a problem. And when you talk about the folks who are in leadership, they cannot all look like one thing. And so you're gonna be able to see that in the first few weeks of my administration because I think it's so important to bring different perspectives and so you're going to see that change. I talked about the school to prison pipeline. You're going to definitely see some impacts on that. You're going to see fewer beds in juvenile halls that are full. You're going to see that around the county the DA's office will not be prosecuting encroachment and illegal lodging offenses because that's criminal to do that in my perspective, you're gonna see more people in diversionary programs, meaning if you have a low level drug offense, you are gonna be able to get treatment and you're gonna be able to not have a conviction as a result of you struggling with drug addiction. Because again, when you don't get to the root of it, this is how we have this cycle of crime. And so my first tenet of my platform is to break the cycle of crime. If you continue to just incarcerate people who are struggling with drug addiction, you're only drying them out for a certain amount of time. They're going to get back out on the streets. They're going to use again. You're going to catch them with needles. You're going to catch them with heroin. You're going to catch them with whatever you're catching them with. That makes them go back into the jails. But if we say, go into the community and get help, and they do that, and after 12 to 18 months, they're good, then why should they have a conviction after that? So you're going to see lower numbers in our jails because we're going to be helping more people. The DA is not going to be the gatekeeper keeping our veterans out of veterans court, keeping folks with mental illness out of our behavioral health courts. We have the courts. We just need people to not stand in the way of the people who need to be in those courts, our collaborative courts. That's what we call them. And so these are the things you'll see in the first 100 days is more people getting help more people getting help. And I just want to just uh, reiterate something powerful that you said was profound. We need help, not handcuffs. Absolutely. You know, just straight like that. We need help, not handcuffs. And um, that's just, we're going to push that for you as well. Well, um, we got 10 seconds left. I want to just, you know, thank you again uh, for attending the Young Black and the Business show. And uh, we know that uh, your people is important and people in general. You know, uh, it's value in teamwork and, uh, and diversity. So thank you for being our champion. And we look forward to... Um, building with you and riding with you absolutely you know, so uh, in conclusion uh, you know we off the air now but we still facebook live and wanted to say it's been a privilege it's been a privilege and uh, Thank you, for you got me. it so uh, june 5th get out and when you arrive to the polls bring five and make that right uh, decision okay for miss Wright. thank you